Living in Las Gradas uh, is, is hard. Um, as La Carpio as a community is a struggling community and to find an area within that community that's having an even harder time, uh, it just it blew my mind. The first time uh, coming to Las Gradas, I at first I felt a little nervous because it just seemed like a good area to get robbed. And then I saw the Las, the Las Gradas, the stairs that go all the way down to the river and all of the homes that are just hanging by a thread on the edge of this cliff, built on like this cheap metal and little pieces of wood they get from the trucks on the way. And as we're walking down, uh, there was just trash everywhere and exposed pipes. And because, I mean, everyone, they get their plumbing and electricity by just tapping into whatever they can. But also it was just uh, the feeling of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, almost desperation, where they were trying to survive and do the best they could, but the odds were just stacked so far against everyone there. And the further we got down, that's when I could hear children laughing, which really confused me. Was, why were children laughing and playing in such a harsh environment? And as we walked down, I, I saw the center and I, I saw a safe place for the kids to play and enjoy and seeing like in this harsh environment where I look like I could hurt myself falling down those stairs. These children were having the time of their life. We came to Costa Rica with the intention of learning Spanish, getting some permanent roots settled in and then finding a ministry to help. And during that process, uh, I made a friend who was a missionary with Christ for the City and he found a way to get me on a tour of the areas that they serve. And while riding with him, uh, Las Gradas was our last stop. So some of the major needs in Las Gradas are ones that you'd expect to find in a poor community. For example, there's a lot of um, early exposure to drugs and alcohol, um, gang violence for as the, especially the boys become older and teenagers. Um, but one of the largest problems in the community is actually sexual and physical abuse. Um, due to the nature of having large extended families all sharing one-room homes, children are exposed to sex from a very young age and then as they get older are then exposed to actual abuse from family members or other people coming through. Um, and that's also helped along by lack of consistent father figures. A lot of times they either have mom's boyfriends or stepfathers or uncles that are kind of coming through and so there's a lot of inconsistency in who's in the house, and so there's a lot of lack of protection for the children. And so as they get older, a lot of that trauma from early childhood then blossoms into other problems that go into prostitution or gang, you know, joining gangs, drug and alcohol abuse. A lot of that stems from that early trauma. So as Calabers, we believe that the most effective thing that we can do is to come alongside local ministries in the countries we're working in with what they're already doing uh, because we believe the most effective way to help a community is to listen to the perspective and follow the perspective of someone who's actually from that community. So one thing we're big on is that we don't want to just put a band-aid on a problem and then leave. We want to address them at the root so that we are offering practical solutions through Christ that we can give um, hope through Christ in ways that will last. Frank and I were involved with co-laborers before we actually even met, and then pretty much since we've been married, we've been working towards becoming missionaries with co-laborers international. And we got to be their very first family ever sent out as missionaries, and knew from the beginning that we would be establishing um, in Latin America a branch of co-laborers. And so we basically came to set the groundwork, and now we have our branch of Calabers as a nonprofit here and are able to receive volunteers, we're able to bring in teams and um, also work alongside ministries and as we grow can help more um, local ministries and work alongside them as Calabers. Um, so a guiding principle for me since I was a teenager that the Lord was something spoken to my heart but basically was my calling into missions 
was to love the ones the rest of the world has given up on. And so that has been our goal from the beginning as a married couple, as missionaries, as a family, is to go to those places where no one else is really willing to go and to love the ones that no one else is willing to, the ones that have been given up on, and show them the love of Christ by doing that.